can you imagine if we were more obedient? If we took God at His word? There is a reason to believe God. There is a reason to our faith. You could be poor in the eyes of man and yet rich in the eyes of God. Joy and satisfaction comes by knowing your purpose in life. Shalom and welcome back to this week's program, Kingdom Insight. This is Dr. Kazumba Chows. This week I want to look at a very important topic, Jesus, the giver of life. Jesus, the giver of life. And to help me with this topic is uh, Pastor Joy Desmoni of David's Heart Ministry, the wife of uh, Pastor Des. Uh, you saw Pastor Des uh, uh, not too long ago in, on one of our programs when he gave his testimony. Uh, first of all, let me welcome my, my, my guest here. Pastor Des, welcome to this program. It's an honor and a privilege to have you on this program. I've known you guys for quite some time, such a passionate people of God, and it has been so wonderful for me and my wife to get to know you. Now, I want you to share, you're going to share on, uh, on the testimony of what the Lord has done, how he gave you life. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I grew up in a Christian home, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, I was very blessed and fortunate. I, unlike um, my husband's testimony, mm -hmm. he grew up in an alcoholic home, but I grew up in a, in a home of where, you know, when the Bible says that before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. Mm -hmm. That has become so real to me because the enemy had a plan, but God also had a plan. Amen. And I was very sheltered, fortunate. I was, um, my parents also struggled with um, alcohol. Mm -hmm. Uh, my birth parents, mm -hmm. and at about nine months of age, uh, my birth father had asked his best friend if um, he would keep me. And it started out as for a night, um, turned into a week, turned into a month, and anyway, they ended up raising me. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, my dad that raised me um, was a minister. He became a minister. And so I was very sheltered. I have siblings who weren't as fortunate as me. And so for 16 years, I was sheltered. God just really, you know, just had this, this protection around me. Mm -hmm. But of course, when I got to the age of 16, I wanted to see what was out there, yeah. wanted to try and explore what the world had, wanted to rebel, mm -hmm. and um, even started having questions about who was I. Mm -hmm. because of being, you know, um, removed from my biological parents or not removed, but, but um, given mm -hmm. um, to somebody else. And so I started to struggle with who I was. Yes, identity crisis. Identity, I uh -huh. did. Mm -hmm. I could have had, I had three last names mm -hmm. and I was like, wow. hey, you know, am I, am I, am I, am I a Stevenson? Am mm -hmm. I an Atricote? Am I a Morset? Mm -hmm. And so I started to begin to struggle with who I was. And, um, you know, so when I went into started, you know, going into um, trying alcohol and the world, I was using um, that I didn't know who I was as an excuse, an excuse yes. to say, you know what, this is why I'm doing, I'm going in, going this way. Mm -hmm. But the truth was, I was just really going in because I was, everyone else was doing it. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't like it that my parents were Christians. I remember around the age of 15, 16, while everybody else was allowed to go to the dances, mm -hmm. Um, it was one of the rules in my house that I wasn't allowed to go, uh, you know, and there was just things that I thought were so unfair. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember at one point in my life wishing that mm -hmm. I wasn't in a Christian home yeah. because I couldn't do what everybody else was doing. Wow. And, um, but when I came to the age of about 17, um, what alcohol had brought was just a lot of pain mm -hmm. and shame. Mm -hmm. And then I was trying to blame. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I just came to the point of, I think by the age of 17, I was so broken. You know, everything that alcohol has to offer um, just strips you of your dignity, yes. strips you of, of, of um, you know, your self-worth. Mm -hmm. And so I was searching and I was saying, I, I remember even saying, I can't serve this God. It's only for old people that don't want to have fun. Wow. I, I literally, wow. you know, convinced myself that it's for old people that mm -hmm. just don't even want to have fun. They're, yeah. you know, it's only for the old <laughs> that are done, you know. And so I was really struggling. Yes. And um, 
get me into a church service, guaranteed the mm -hmm. power of God would hit me oh. and I would repent, I would mm -hmm. cry. Mm -hmm. But come Friday, I would be back with my friends mm -hmm. again. And, and I back would be to the, to the world. back to the world, oh. back to the party scene, back mm -hmm. to, you know, but come Sunday, mm -hmm. um, if, you know, my dad would say, you know, do you want to come to church? I got to the point of where I'd say, you know what? No, I don't want to go. Mm -hmm. Because I knew if I got in the presence of God that the Lord would melt my heart mm -hmm. and then I would be repenting again. It mm -hmm. was just a repetitive cycle. Mm -hmm. And it got to the point of where I had purposed in my heart um, just close to my 18th birthday mm -hmm. that I can't do this God thing. Yeah. I just can't. Yeah. I just felt like I, I failed too mm -hmm. many times and I thought, you know what, I, it's easier just to, to, to live in the world than mm -hmm. it is to serve to God. Serve God yeah. I didn't have a revelation of who God was. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I remember serving God, not so much because my dad preached it. My dad was actually a man who just um, was, a, was a man of love. And my mm -hmm. mom was a mother who, you know, I would be coming in after a weekend of being out with friends. And, and I remember this one particular time, the last time, mm -hmm. mom was just, you know, made me a meal. And she mm -hmm. said, you know, get some rest. And, and I remember just feeling God's love and just feeling like I was always disappointing them, mm -hmm. feeling like, you know, I, I just I just felt like a failure. And um, I ended up just saying to the Lord, I can't do it. I just can't do it anymore. I um, had purposed, yeah, I'm going to be 18 and finally I'll be bar age. Um, sadly to say, I was getting into the bars at a young age, mm -hmm. um, could alter my appearance mm -hmm. to look a lot older. Yeah. And so I was getting into that lifestyle, um, hanging out with a lot of older people. Mm -hmm. And, um, but I was so broken. I was so empty. I knew the truth, mm -hmm. but, but had just made up my mind that I wasn't going to serve God. So you knew the truth mm -hmm. and you just made up your mind, I wasn't going to serve the Lord. Correct. Now, if I may ask before we, we, we flow here, did you feel like condemnation because you didn't live up to the word of God? I think I did. I did um, to a certain point, but I could be honest and say it wasn't from family mm -hmm. and it wasn't even from the people that, you know, the, the, the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. I believe it was the more I isolated myself Yourself. and the more I stayed away mm -hmm. because every time I was around my family, my family just, the ones that were serving God, they loved me unconditionally. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have an aunt who, who was just... Uh, you know, just took me, you mm -hmm. know, under, just under her wing and loved me. Mm -hmm. But yes, I did feel condemnation. And I, I knew it, you know, now I know it was the enemy that would bring that condemnation on me and saying, yeah, you're right. You'll probably never serve the Lord mm -hmm. like your parents. You'll probably never serve the Lord, even like the young girls that you mm -hmm. see at church. You're probably never going to do that. And so I believe that I would never do it and mm -hmm. would feel the condemnation. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you, you made a very good point in the beginning. You said uh, the enemy had the plans for you mm -hmm. and God had the plans for you. Yes. When did you realize to see those pictures? I know we're going to get back to you telling us more when everything changed. But when did you see that? Because uh, it's a very difficult uh, thing to see that uh, here, I'm in this situation, the enemy's plans are always death. Right, right. And you say that it de deprive you of everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, God's or Jesus's, uh, you know, uh, uh, desire for us is totally different or the plans right, for it. Right. When did you realize that? I, I didn't, I, I realized it, um, like I said, I was waiting for my 18th birthday because mm -hmm. I thought I'm going to be legal bar age. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I'll be able to get in legally. Yes. And little did I know that God had a plan mm -hmm. that I literally, as I look back and I see you know, that I, I didn't come to the realization, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, there was a, a time in my life of where my dad had actually asked me if I wanted to go to Bible school. Mm -hmm. And I said, no, that's the last thing I want to do. Um, I, like I said, Dad, I can't do this God thing. And he says, well, it's in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, well yeah, I'll go to Bible <laughs> school <laughs> if it's in Hawaii. Yeah. But, uh, you know, sadly to say I had wrong motives, uh -huh. wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I got there, mm -hmm. until I went into um, to take a discipleship training school. Mm -hmm. 
And it wasn't until I got there, and I remember my first week being there, mm -hmm. and just being saturated in the love of God, surrounded by people that were just pouring into mm -hmm. me and, and reassuring me that God loved me. Mm -hmm. It was there. And this was actually, uh, my birthday was in September, so mm -hmm. this would have been the first week of October. October, yeah. And um, was the very first time that I realized mm -hmm that, hey, you know what, I, I actually feel loved. Mm -hmm. I actually don't feel like a failure. Mm -hmm. And it was at that time that I realized that, you know, that God was actually for me. He wasn't against me. Wow. God was actually for me. He wasn't against you at that time. Mm -hmm. And the Bible tells us that God, he is for us. He's yes. not against us. Yes. He's not out there to get us. He's That's not right. out there to kill us. That's he doesn't right. have a, a spanking stick That's trying right. to spank us yep. with his word. That's he hasn't right. given us his word yeah. as a spanking stick. Mm -hmm. But this is like a manual for us to live mm -hmm. a life that he designed for us. Yes. Because otherwise the enemy has a plan. Yep. A plan to destroy us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. You're getting me excited here. And I know our viewers are, and we'll be back uh, for the second segment here. But I want you to know, as you're watching this program, I want you to know that God has a plan for you. God created you for a purpose. He didn't create you to fail. He didn't create you to be anything other than a successful child or daughter of God. You may be looking at yourself condemned, to, you've condemned yourself. You don't want to be in, in church. You think like you don't measure up. Listen, yes, we don't measure up. It is God who makes us to measure up through his grace. As Pastor Joy shares this testimony, I want you to know God is about to do something different in your life. He's about to bring a new beginning for you. Stay tuned and we'll be back. You are watching again, Kingdom Insight.